Hey, I'm Mr. Newhart, and I am here for your next KCS home video. Now, I'm first going to go through a short presentation, and then I'm going to, after that, talk about your tasks that you will be going to do. So with this task, we're going to talk about the age of expiration, but specifically, we are going to be talking about the Columbia Exchange. So first off, I do want to mention that if you do have trouble understanding this video, you can turn on the, clan, uh, the closed captions if available. You can adjust the playback speed to slow down the video. You consider watching short clips, then pause, listen, and watch again. If not, watch it with someone else and stop it periodically and see and hear what you understood. So our essential question is, you know, what was the impact of the Columbia Exchange? And our objective is, what did the Columbia Exchange have on the new world and the old world. So going back to this, to understand the Columbia exchanges, what do you know about the age of exploration? Well, it was a time period where there was a lot of exploring. There's several videos online that you can find. Uh, one that I like using a lot is a TED Ed that talks specifically about the age of exploration and really is the exploration over or the age of exploration over or is it still continuing? So why did people in the 14, 15 and 1600s, why do they want to explore? Well, a lot of it dealt with the Crusades, Renaissance, Reformation, uh, your monarchs, technological advances, as well as people seeking fame and fortune. Well, with the Crusades, nations competed for Asian trade. So you had your spices, you had your silk. With the Renaissance, there was a curiosity about other lands and peoples. Uh, with the Reformation, you have refugees, you have missionaries that are traveling all across lands. Monarchs are seeking new sources of revenue. With technology, though, this really inspired the age of exploration because compasses were getting better. He had better maps and he had a better astrolabe. With weapons, too, though, he had better ships better sails, better cannons, he had better pistols as well. With maps, what we're looking at is people were being able to venture out farther than ever. So besides the old world being Europe, North Africa, and Asia, they were seeking something else beyond that. But there are three direct causes to the age of exploration. We call that three G's, which is God, gold, and glory. So with glory, we're looking more political. People wanted to gain wealth. They want to gain land for power. With gold, there is more of an economic incentive. Discover new trade, new trade routes, and goods around the world. And with the God, they wanted to spread their religion. But all these together they reinforce each other so what was the new world what was the old world well the new world was north america uh, as well as south america and central america whereas the old world was europe asia and north africa So the impact of the age of exploration, Europeans would 
eventually reach and sell into the Americas. They would expand their knowledge of world geography. There was a growth of trade. Uh, there were definitely a lot of uh, conflicts, deaths with the Native American population. There was the introduction of slavery and the Columbian Exchange, which we are about to talk about. So, how did this happen? Well, the Columbian Exchange, there's a couple different models that you can look at. You have the Four Corners model as well as triangular trade. You're gonna learn about a lot about this next year. So, it first starts off with Europe. They need raw materials to make manufactured goods. Well, they can provide those manufactured goods to these African kingdoms. And <clears throat> with that, uh, they provide slave ships as well. So with their money or manufactured goods, um, they provide, they get slaves, they go to the Americas, such as South and North, and what North and South Americas provide are sugar, rum, coffee, indigo, cotton, tobacco, lumber, any of those that can be sent back to Europe to be made into manufactured goods. So what the Columbia Exchange is, is an exchange between of goods between Europe and the Americas involves plants, foods, crops, animals, human populations, diseases as well. So when we talk about diseases, we're talking about a wide variety of things. Uh, smallpox, measles, the whooping cough. And what we find is that prior to the first colonies even coming, uh, settling into America from Europe is that you know, it devastates the Aztecs, these great American um, or South American or Central and South American uh, empires because they don't have any immunity to it. So one thing that we need to look at is how did the Columbia Exchange increase world populations? I want you to keep that in the back of your mind as you go through this lesson. So what was exchanged from what to what? So from Europe, he had wheat, he had horses, cattle, pigs, sheep, goats, chickens. And from the Americas, he had maize, which is corn. He had potatoes, beans, tomatoes, peppers, peanuts, pineapples. And he had a lot of food that was being exchanged. And that's one reason why the world population increased was because of this, because there's a lot more availability, there's a lot more access to this. So what I'm gonna do now is look into your task. And so looking at the uh, Columbia Exchange, what I want you to do is read the following passages about it and afterwards, I want you to answer two key questions for each reading. So you have a short picture of what would have been exchanged back then, a brief overview, and then go into certain readings. So reading number one is about diseases. Reading number two is about crops and animals. And your third one is about food and culture. Now, after you get done reading those, what I want you to do is answer two key questions for each of them. What was being exchanged? And I want you to be, be specific. And what type of impact did the exchange have on the people and the environment? And I want you to list the, both the negative and the positive. And you can do this whichever way you want. You can do it 
um, in a graphic organizer. Um, you can do it in a, a T graph. It doesn't really matter. Now, after that, I want you to write a one paragraph summary. So we're looking at around five sentences on the following question. Which exchange has had the most significant impact on our lives today? And I want you to tell me why. So the disease is probably pretty easy with what's going on with the coronavirus today. But think beyond that. And you can do a little bit of research on yourself. And one thing I would like to mention to you is, well, as you're reading, okay, you know what the question is, go on and mark, if you can, in the side margins and circle or underline of what may be a positive and what may be a negative impact. So, either way, I hope you enjoy this lesson. If you need anything else, just let us know. And we look forward to seeing your responses.